Hey, what is going on guys? Tyler or the Cosmic Spider here and I want to talk to you guys quickly about the D-Lab and the EDPT because those are the two specialty tests uh, in the military. I don't think they're the only tests, but they're the two I've taken and they're really the only tests that you really need to take to qualify for jobs in the Air Force outside of the as yeah, clearly. So I'm going to start with the D-Lab because D-Lab is what I took second app. Like I took it right after the ASVAB and then I took the EDPT like a week or two ago. And so the D-Lab is the hardest test I've ever taken in my entire life. I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to be a challenge. And the challenge comes from half of it being auditory and half of it being visual. Uh, the auditory part just kicked my ass. It's hard. It's a really hard test. Um, so let me start out by telling you guys this is not going to be a video to tell you how to study because I don't study I've never been a studier I just kind of look up what is going to be on the test and then I kind of recall or brush up I guess I, I don't know I guess you could almost call it studying but that's more researching for me I'm not like trying to find ways to do the problems I'm just trying to see what problems are actually going to be on this test <laughs> so I'm not really going to be able to give you study advice I'm just going to tell you what you're going to need to know you can figure out how to study on your own. Um, so for the D-Lab, basically just know your parts of speech. Know the parts of a sentence. Know your syntaxes, all that kind of crap, because it's going to get real. Uh, the first part is incredibly easy on the D-Lab. It's a uh, phone blown up. I'm popular. Um, the first part of the D-Lab is easy. It's a visual thing. I'm pretty sure all you do is translate sentences, and it's incredibly easy. Um, the second and third part are the uh, audio parts, and those are pain in the ass. Basically, I don't remember which part's which, but I think they're basically the same thing. You're going to be read a sentence. I don't remember if it's in English. I think it's in English. You're read a sentence in English, and you have to translate it to this made-up language. And the hard part about it is you're only read it once. You cannot see it again or hear it again, so you really have to pay attention. I think the second part is easier because it kind of is just like, you can just learn what the words mean and you don't have to worry about like where they're positioned. Um, there's not like a lot of rules to it. It's kind of just follows the same English sentence structure. But the third part, you have to follow five rules to um, make the sentence work. And the rules could be like adjectives after nouns. It could be like if a subject of a sentence is a woman, then the object ends in this. And if it's a man, it ends in this. And... Um, it kind of gives you those parts and like subparts of that part, if that makes sense. So the third part has like four or five subparts. The first part, you just do one rule. The second part, you do two rules. The third part, you do three rules. The fourth bit, four, you know, so on and so forth, whatever. And then the last part of the D-Lab is a pain in the ass because it doesn't make any sense. It's like, it'll give you three pictures. It's a visual part. It's not auditory. So finally, take those stupid headphones off. Um visual but it's hard because I don't understand it but it, it gives you like three pictures and you have to find a f oh shoot am I remembering that right I remember there's pictures and you have to find meaning of another picture okay so basically let me just maybe it gives you four pictures and you have to find the meaning of like the last picture but the first picture could be like a fish and above that it'll tell you you know some stupid made-up word that you have to assume means something to do with a fish a second picture might be somebody walking a dog, and they will give you a phrase for that person walking a dog. So maybe you have to assume that this fish is a pet, and that's the name for a pet, and that would be the phrase for walking your pet. And then the third picture might be a fish in a skillet cooking, and it'll give you that thing. And then so clearly, that doesn't make any damn sense. Maybe you're just looking for the word cook. And it'll be like a different variant of this made-up word. So you might think, okay, maybe that's the word for pet fish, and maybe this is the word for food fish. Yeah, it's basically that. And then the third picture might be somebody, I don't know, freaking cooking a fish. I don't know. It's not that simple, but it, it they're like unrelated. I did I did I could not find a relationship between those, which is why I think that I did not actually qualify. I only got a 107 on my D-Lab, and I believe it's a 110 in the Air Force to get linguist jobs, so boo-hoo, I didn't really want them anyway, but I just wanted to be as highly qualified as I could be in case in the future maybe I did want to be a linguist, but I wasn't too upset. 
Um, I hate failing anything, so that's the only reason I was really upset. I just wanted to pass because I want to be smart and I want to pass. But I didn't. Okay, so let's talk about the EDPT because people consider the EDPT the hardest test in the military. I don't agree. I think the EDPT is not that hard, especially since the jobs, first of all. There's not that many jobs that require an EDPT. I think there's like four or five in the entire military. Two of them are in the Air Force, and I think two of them are in the m m m Marines. So the EDPT is not a computerized test. It is it's kind of like... I guess I would say it's like the ACT. It's on a piece of paper, Scantron paper. Um, your MEPS might actually have a scanner to read them, so you get your score right away. I had to wait an hour and a half because I had to have two people check it. And there's 128 questions, so it took a while. Um, but the EDPT has four parts primarily. It has like number sequences, it has analogies, and it has algebra, word problems, and... What did I not? Oh, like spatial recognition, kind of like the ASVAB to where you have these shapes and you're, you're given one shape. Let's say it's like a circle or something. And then, or like a circle with a little slash in it. Okay, and then the next shape is like a circle with the slashes outside instead. So like half of it's this way, half of it's that way, and nothing in the middle. So the relationship is pretty clear. I mean, you just kind of pull the middle out. Word. That's an easy one. Okay, and then they'll give you a third image, which might be like a square. I can't make a square, but oh yeah, you can. You can make a rectangle. So say it's like a rectangle. And inside that rectangle, you have a slash and then, you know, whatever. That's an easy one. But that's basically the whole premise. You have to find a relationship between the two first images. And then you're given a third and you have to pick from like five. Yes, there's five answers, not four. A, B, C, D, E. And you have to find one of those that follows that relationship. So it's kind of a pain. I didn't really like that so much, but my least favorite was analogies. I suck at analogies. If for whatever reason you are not familiar with what an analogy is, let me brighten you up a bit. An analogy would be like saying horse is to hoof as dog is to paw. I mean, that's what it, that's what now they're not that simple. But that was one of the sample questions. I think it was horses to hoof or hoof is to horse as paw is to cat. I think that's one of the sample questions. So there's eight sample questions. Uh, so you only have to answer 120 of them in 90 minutes. So you have less than a minute per question. So if you are getting hung up, if it's taking you over 40 seconds per question, just move on uh, or guess. <laughs> I actually ended the test with 10 minutes left. I didn't. I only skipped three, so I had plenty of time to go back and look over most of my answers. And so I got done quick. But the algebra things, okay, everything, the math is going to be harder the, um, than the ASVAB. The math is all word problems, but you can mostly just skim through it and not really take it to heart. Never get caught up in the story of a word problem. That doesn't make any sense. Um, most of the information that you're going to need is at the end. So if you just want to skip to the end, that might work. I don't know. I didn't do that. I just kind of read it and then did what I did. You get scratch paper and a piece of pencil, no calculator. And there's a lot of long division. So brush up on your long division skills now if you're not uh, used to that. And also, that's a good I mean, that's a good thing because I haven't had to do long division since like fifth grade. And um, also multiplying fractions, not fractions, multiplying decimals. Because once you hit middle school, you really don't use decimals. You use fractions. Fractions just make more sense. Um, so make sure you know how to multiply decimals and make sure you know how to do long division. I mean... And make sure you know how to change mixed numbers into improper fractions because I love improper fractions. I freaking hate mixed numbers. Anybody who uses mixed numbers is crazy. Uh, number sequences are kind of hard, but they're pretty easy to find a relationship. Um, it's not going to be as simple as like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What comes next? It's not that simple, but it could be, it could be like 1, 3, 5, 15, and then 17. That's what it would be because you do times 3 plus 2 times 3 plus 2. It could be stuff like that. So just keep an open mind. They're not that hard to find, I didn't think. But I did end up qualifying. I got a 75 on my EDPT. And I think the Air Force it has two jobs. One's 9S100 and one is some other job that is like a programming job to where you develop software, that kind of stuff, I guess. And it's a 71 for the programming job and a 56 or 54 for the 9S job. And so if you're not interested in any of those, don't take it. But I just took it because, again, I wanted to be as highly qualified as I can. And honestly, the 9S job, I know it's not really a job, um, appeals to me. I think it'd be kind of interesting, but there's not a lot of those available, so I can't really do anything about it.
but that's it. Again, this is not a study guide, so I'm just trying to tell you guys, make you guys aware of what's going on, because I know it can be kind of hard to find some of the information, um, especially current information. Not that I think the tests change that much, but uh, this is as of June and like May of 2015, so it's pretty current, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope it helped you. If you guys have any more specific questions about either the D-Lab the EDPT, or even the ASVAB, just leave it down in the comments section. It'll allow me to really think more on that subject and get back to you guys with a more precise answer toward that. But I do leave in a week, so I'm excited. Oh, I'm so happy to be leaving in a week. Um, I'm going in open mechanical, which really scares me because I'm not a mechanical type person, but I'm just hoping that they're not all like super grease monkey type jobs, you know? I just... Don't know if that would really appeal to me, so, oh, I'm really worried, but I'm, I don't know. I'm keeping an open mind. I'm not really taking other people's reviews of their jobs on forums into consideration because this is my experience and I'm going to make out of it what I will, all right? I'm not going to let other people tell me how I should feel about something, so that's all. I think I will upload a couple more videos before I leave for basic training, but for the most part, this is about all there is, and then I'll leave... June 9th, and I'll come back probably, probably won't upload again until like tech school maybe, so I probably won't upload again until like September, which is a long way away. But anyway, hope this helped you guys, and I'll be talking to you guys later.